Hello and welcome to Upside Down. In today's quick tutorial, we are going to explore inside Unreal, how you can create master materials, material instances and also few tricks about textures. Let's start. I have the default scene here with four textures that I loaded from one material. These are textures that I created for the lava cave scene. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link down in the description below. So first thing that I will do, I will create a master material. What is a master material? Master material is a place that holds all the notes. You can create a very complicated material material with many notes with many different uh, settings with many different variables that you can change and later on just create material instances where you're going to promote some of the variables so that you can quick and easy change the textures change some other parameters and not to have to go through the whole graph that you have inside the whole material so let's first create a material i'm going to right click somewhere in our content browser and we go to material so i'll just call this master material Okay, and I'll click one more time on it to open it. So this is our material graph. Unreal 4 is using node-based scripting and also the material graphs as well is a node-based which makes it very easy and simple, especially for artists to create more complicated things. So first here on the left side, we have our preview of the material and how it looks. We can change into different objects. Then underneath it on details, we have all the information which is for our material. We are just going to go very quickly into it and I'm going to make another tutorial series if it's interesting for you for creating different types of materials and what options we have as properties. But the basic things is that here from the material you can choose for what kind of purposes you are going to use your material. And also as you can see here we have some of our nodes disabled. This is because of the settings here. And by changing them, we can enable some of those. As well, we can make it two-sided. Usually two-sided materials are used for things like vegetation or clothes or other things which are very thin and you don't uh, really need any thickness to be seen. So let's start by making our material. First thing that I want to have your attention on is to make difference between if you are making a material which you are know that you don't want to promote these variables and you don't want to change in future, so you are just going to leave it as it is, like very simple one, or you are making a material which you actually want to promote some variables. The difference is there that what kind of nodes you will need to use. If you are going to make it so that you can promote the variables, it's best to do it from the very beginning. One thing that it will make it a little bit easier to visualize it is if I get and just drag this diffuse texture here, you can see that it says texture sample and now I can connect it of course to whatever of the slots I need but this texture cannot be promoted as a variable inside of a material instance and if we want to do this the way that we can add it is by right clicking and then we can come to parameters in parameters we can find all the things that we can promote after that two material instances and what we are searching for is texture sample parameter 2d and you can see that immediately it will just tell us that we need to name our parameter. So I'll just put D for diffuse. And now we have this texture as a parameter inside, which means that later on we can promote it as a variable. I'm going to control C and control V so that I can copy paste the slot. And I'm going to rename the other texture parameter. You, you can notice that when I have it selected, the menu here on the site in details changes. So at the moment, I'm not changing the settings. If I have nothing selected, I'm changing the settings of the material. If I have it selected, I'm changing the settings of the node which I have selected. So this one is going to be for our occlusion, roughness and metallic. And I will make, and I will make two more. One is going to be for our emissive and another one is going to be for normal map. Perfect. Now that we have everything done and named, we need to change the textures inside. So I can select the parameter that I want and come here and drag and drop the texture that we need. Before starting to connect everything, I need to change one more thing. This is to tell Unreal what exactly is our occlusion, roughness and metallic texture. Because by default, if I click, you can see that it came with the default compression settings. It's an important part to change this, because if we don't change it, our values are not going to be displayed properly. And for example, if you're using Substance Painter and you just export things inside, your objects are going to look like if they are wet. So for Occlusion, roughness and metallic textures, we need to change the compression from default to mask without sRGB and after that we save it. So now Unreal will understand and take the proper values from this texture that we have. 
Now we are ready to start connecting. What I usually like to do is to multiply the diffuse with the occlusion. So we can drag from the RGB, type multiply, then connect the multiply to base color. I will move everything a little bit on the side. Now I'm going to get the red channel. I'll make another multiply, which I will connect to point B. I actually want to control the value of how strong the effect of this occlusion is going to be multiplying with our diffuse texture. So what we need to do is to put a scalar parameter on B. We can right click and go again to the parameters tab and find scalar parameter. We are going to name it AO power for ambient occlusion power and I'm going to connect it to B. So now I'll put the default value to one. So this way we have the value of what we have in the texture. If you put it on zero, we are just going to have, we are just not going to have any effect. I'll just make things a little bit more organized. Okay, we are going now to do similar thing for the roughness, but instead of multiplying, we are going to put an additive node. I'll copy and paste this scalar parameter and I'll name it air power for roughness power. We are connecting it to B and then we are putting the additive node to roughness. And the metallic channel, I'll just con connect it directly like this because we don't want to change any values there. Now we are going to do similar thing with the emissive. So I will copy a multiply and the AO power and call it a power for emissive power. We are going to connect it here. By default, I want it to be zero because I don't want to have effect all the time. And later on, we are going to change this into our material instance. And I'm going to connect this to our emissive color. And for the normal map, we are going to do a little trick because I want to show you how you can control the values inside your normal map and lower either the effect or make it stronger on your models. And of course, we are again going to promote it to a variable that we will be able after that easily to tweak from our material instances. So what we need first, I will move it a little bit downwards. I'll copy and paste one of our scalar perimeters. I'll call it and power so that we have for normal power and I'll put it the default value to one and from our texture from the red channel I'll go and type multiply and from the green channel I'll do the same multiply and now I'm going to connect the end power to B on both of those from the top one I will drag and I'll type append so on B we are putting the second one and we need one more append because we need to connect as well the blue channel. So again, dragging from this one append and connect it to B. And now we can connect this to our normal. And now here in append, in the, in the last append, you can see how our texture looks like. If I change this parameter to zero, you can see that it becomes a flat normal and for example I'll do it on 3. Now on 3 you can see that it has a lot stronger effect from the default texture. I'll return it to 1 and we are ready with our base shader. We need to click apply. When clicking apply Unreal is recompiling everything and if there are any errors you are going to get them down here and we can click save and we are ready with our master material. Now to create a material instance we need to right click and create material instance. I usually like to name them MI so that I know that it's a material instance. And after that, I can type the name, in this case, Lava. We created it, I'll click and open it. And you can see that now it looks in a different way than what we had in our master material. We don't have the graph editor, instead we have this parameter group on the side where everything that we promoted from the master material, now we can change. So if we want to change our diffuse, emissive, normal or occlusion, roughness and metallic textures, we can do it from here and then simply by drag and dropping to any of the slots, we can change the texture. Or if we want to play with the parameters, like for example, I want some emissive, let's say two, we can put it from here. If we don't want it, we can turn it off. 
then we can play with the normal strength you can see that on five it becomes a lot more noticeable or on zero its effect is completely gone this way you can very quickly and easy create different variations for different materials that you have in your scene or for example if you have multiple objects you don't need every time to create the same graph so that you create a new material you can just create material instances replace the textures change some of the values if you want to change them and you are ready it's very fast and very efficient. Also, at some point, if you create another version of the master material, for example, you need one which has two sided, you can easily come to the material instance, go scroll down a little bit, and you can see that there is a section called parent. If we have another master material, we can easily swap this with the other master material, and then the new properties here are going to be updated. Thank you for watching today's quick tutorial, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can stay in touch of everything that I'm posting. Thank you for joining me today, leave a comment if you want me to make a video on some topic and see you next time.